Okay. So my role um, in the design is that I project manage all the website redesigns that come into user experience and digital strategy. So I work with clients to help them realize their vision, stay within their budget, um, if they cannot afford a custom design. I help represent the client's voice and collaborate with Mark and Chow um, and, and their team uh, to ensure that the development of that design is planned and built within their budget. So we do um, intake during the process of the build. Um, Mark and I will go to clients in the beginning of the process to talk about what their vision is, um, what kind of websites they like, what kind of websites they don't like. Um, and Mark asks a series of questions to really just get at the meat of what they're trying to do. And he also um, works off previously designed wireframes to ensure that his design is in line with what the information architect has for him. And we'll get into wireframes in a little bit with Mark. So we design small, medium, and large websites. So um, some clients want a unique design that still feels like Yale, um, but only have a budget for minor modifications. So right now I have four different clients ranging in budget from $15,000 to $100,000. So we can do lots of different things for you. And each of the projects is unique, and each level of design really varies. So all of our designs um, meet Yale's standard for identity and usability and accessibility. And a little while later, I believe Michael Wayne Harris will be talking about accessibility and how to build those sites. So our team ensures that all websites can be usable with, for anyone, anyone with disabilities. Um, one example is that we're very cognizant of color contrast um, and, and, and also the, use, the images that we choose, we make sure that people with limited sight can see them, that they can see the differences in the contrast of the fonts. Um, and we also describe all of our images with alt text behind the scenes so that screen readers can, can understand what people are seeing or not seeing. Ready? So there are three main uh, Yale sites themes that were developed last year. This is uh, one called Yale Standard. Uh, everything is static on the background. It doesn't expand when you expand the screen. This is called the wide theme. And uh, the menu bar at the top is really infinite as, as you resize your screen. And you can see the uh, banner image is, is wider. This one's called the box theme. Uh, the whole page is contained in a box, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's very uh, lightly outlined there. So that doesn't spread open when you, when you expand your screen. So it's easy to, to modify these Yale Sites themes. You can do it very easily based on some colors that are recommended by the Yale Sites team, and you can do this yourself. Even I mean, you can make a small change. Making something a different color can give your website a unique look just by doing that one thing. But if you want something a little bit more highly customized, um, that's where we can help. Um, as Dana mentioned, we like to take into consideration accessibility, the color, um, Yale branding issues, and we base it. We still base it on the Yale site's grid, even though it could end up looking very customized and different from Yale Sites theme. This is a color contrast analyzer. Um, the color on the left is a Yale Web Blue. And if you look at, towards the bottom, um, this is for accessibility standards. You can see that it passes at different sizes. Uh, AA and, and AAA, those are two different standards of accessibility, AAA being a little bit higher. It's usually for government sites, things like that. Uh, the color on the right was a color we actually used in the Yale nursing site, and you can see it failed at, at small sizes. It passed at the largest size, so we were cognizant that we would only use that white on this this yellow, this uh, red orange background if it was at a larger size, so that it passed this accessibility test. This is also the color contrast analyzer for color blindness, and you can see the Yale web blue, um, how it looks 
for people with all these different versions of colorblindness, you didn't know there were so many, I'm sure, but uh, this shows you how they, they would see that yellow blue. And it still shows up with enough contrast, so it, it passed that test. This is a color board that I use when people want you know, more highly customized site and they want individual colors. Um, well, I use this for the Yale nursing site. So what I did was I came up with four or five different color schemes based on information they gave me. As, as uh, Dana said, I asked some questions about how they want the website to feel. The, nurse, the nursing uh, school wanted their site to have a really unique look. They wanted people to know it was Yale, but they wanted to, people to see that they had their own identity. So that's why I brought in like this other color, this orange color, which, which they happen to like. Uh, this color, this color board also shows how the header text would look, the, uh, the first level and the second level, and the body of the text. So these are things that you all have to agree on before you start. Uh, this, all the stakeholders are involved in this, and it really helps to nail this down before you start to save time and, and money in the end. This is actually called a mood board. This is even more extensive than just a color board. Um, this is for just a fictitious site. I did this for a class I had. So you, you find images based on what they told you again about how they want the website to feel. And these images should evoke that feeling. They're not images that are going to be on the site. They're just images that evoke a feeling, a mood. And you can see these images are kind of angular and structural and that was the kind of mood that this website would have and there's a you know there's some colors that they would use and also shows the um the style the headers and and the body of the, the text these are standard yale typefaces um the yale font at the top the sans is a, a sans serif typeface i if you know what serifs are in the yale university um letters here the font is a serif font all those like wider and thinner edges around the letters they're called serifs uh, a new typeface that was developed recently is called mallory it's also a sans serif typeface that we're using for our, our website development this is a, a sample of body text using the mallory typeface the spacing between lines is called letting. It's very important to pay attention to that. Usually, uh, smaller tracts of text can have a lot letting, uh, more letting. And if you have a lot of text, it's usually tighter. And you can see this in newspapers. That's why they have columns and the text is very tight, because your eye has trouble following columns that are very wide. So you, you should keep, the, keep that in mind when you're, when you're designing the text. And also, um, the serif fonts like they use for the New York Times, tend to work better in print. And sans serif fonts work pretty well on the web because some, some, sometimes those serifs with the thin and thick lettering, they get lost. So it's better to use a sans serif typeface. Um, now, as Dana mentioned, when I started visual design, I base it on a wireframe. This is an example of a wireframe. A wireframe is established by the information architect and in collaborating with the stakeholders uh, determines what exactly is going to be on the page, the elements of the page, not how it's going to look exactly, but the elements. All of these elements have to be on that page. They want a banner. They want um, these four degree programs. They want news from Yale School of Nursing. And in this relative order, when I design the site, I, I have to pay attention. I make sure all the things that are on this page are on the page that I design. And, the, and there are wireframes for each page of the site. Um, sometimes there are categories of pages, so you don't have to do, you know, if your site has 30,000 pages, you might have, you know, 20 wireframes. So this is how the Yale School of Nursing uh, site ended up. I wanted to show it to you next to the wireframe. So there is some leeway. I mean, I, I have a banner. It's not, you know, the, the, the height of the banner was not really determined in the wireframe. It just says that it has to be there at the top. And then I had the four degree programs. I moved the Yale, the news, the Yale School of Nursing news off into the right column so that, you know, that and the degree programs are in the center of the site, just like the wireframe. And then you had some other uh, smaller stories at the bottom. So you can see that it doesn't have to follow it exactly, but it has to follow generally the information that's on the wireframe. So when I start designing, I use a program called Sketch. Uh, this is what it looks like. Sketch is um, it's a design program. It's, it's not quite as 
as um, high level as something like Illustrator. But what it does, it's, it's, it's developed for people who are designing websites. So when you place an element, it restricts you in some ways. And that's good. It, for, so when the developers make the site, which I'll get into later, they're able to, to pick up the information um, on the pages very easily. Uh, this You can have multiple pages as you're working in Sketch. Here are three pages from the School of Nursing. I could make, you know, for instance, the, um, the header information and the, uh, the menu at the top can be a design element that I can copy and, and paste onto all those pages so I don't have to do it you know, each time. It's a, very, it's a very useful little program. So the first thing I do, and the, the Yale School of Nursing chose the, uh, they wanted to base theirs on the Yale site's wide theme. There's a, a grid that this is based on, and I have that grid in the background. You can see those gray bars. I put that grid into Sketch. So when I started designing the, uh, the nursing site, I made sure that it followed that same grid. And so the, for, for instance, you see the Yale degree programs, they're, they're each of them laid over four bars of that grid. And you can also see how what I changed from the, uh, the basic theme. For instance, the bar at the top says Yale University and search this site, I basically just changed the color. Um, the menu is still aligned at the top with the, the different menu items going in a line there. I, I used the Yale font for Yale School of Nursing. As I said, they were very insistent about having their own identity and look. So I, you know, I put in that, that, that orange color, which they liked, to give them you know, a little bit of an identity. And, and that went, pretty, went over pretty well with them. Uh, this, is, this is how the, uh, the site ended up looking. These are some of the internal pages. Each page is, is also based on that grid. And um, each page I, I did in Sketch. And I, I used you know, the general wide theme elements. For instance, the, uh, the block on the side. I put it over on the left, even though I think on, on the, uh, the main theme it was on the right. So you have some wiggle room here. So if you look at this, it, it probably doesn't look anything like a Yale site's theme, but it actually is built on a Yale site's theme. And that's the kind of thing that we can do. And these are some of the other pages. So when I'm finished designing in Sketch, I export it to a program called Zeppelin, which is online. And those pages end up in Zeppelin. And the developer can, just by ruling over the page, pick out the hex values of the colors, the size of the font, the placement of the images, exactly. So I don't have to write up a design document uh, defining all those things. This saves an enormous amount of time. And it's really great for the developers. And uh, now uh, Chow's going to talk about that part of this. Uh, good morning, everybody, uh, or good noon. Um, again, my name is um, Chow. I'm a front-end dribble um, designer. Um, I don't know about all of you, but I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. <laughs> um, I can smell pizza from my away. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for just to eat a whole box of pizza. <laughs> um, anyways, um, <clears throat> let's talk about Zapline. What is a Zapline? <clears throat> so basically, Zapline is a communication tool between graphic designer and front-end designer to uh, co collaborations. Um, it's where for me and Mark communicating. Let's say if there's a graphic des designer who doesn't understand coding, or I don't know anything about um, any graphic design. What they do is um, they design it and input to uh, Zapline. Zapline will generate a code for me to grab. Um, so, so, so here's an example of the um, here's an example. I use the I select the YSN degree program, and right here you will see. Um, it's generating like CSS um, code. The but the, the meaning one I use is like um, the font family style, the font st st um, size, the color, and the line height. Um, so after this, I used to um, export this to um, to CSS injector and apply to the code. 
So here's an, another example. I use um, leader, leaders and research. Um, here's more code. So when picking a team, uh, what I do is for a nursing project, for instance, I pick uh, the outside Y because the menu is fully across um, the browser. So I, I pick the Y thing is, is the most closest one to fit the design. So why do we need to create something? Something is very important because um, without, without using something, someone can easily go there and break it. Um, create something is uh, like a backup. So if another me go in there and do some JavaScript or CSS and break the site, I still have a sub team backup, and um, so it will allow you to uh, restore the, the stuff you have. So, and the other side, we use o Omega theme for um, and Drupal. Omega, Omega themes, it has like regions, zones, sections. So, and the other side, we have three themes the outside box, the outside standard, and the outside wide. Um, for nursing, we can create another sub theme using wide, and it will, it will split. Like in this, and like in this picture, um, like uh, your box Y, we will create like another sub theme of it. Of we call it like a nursing sub theme. Um, for easy for next time, if we want to use another sub theme, we can use something like nursing, for instance, to. Um, to have a same markup as um, something. Um, HTML markups. I think uh, when creating a website, it's very important to have a markup because um, you want to, um, for instance here, you want to have site title as H1 and then other important heading like as a H2 because it's, 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 it's causing accessible, um, you want to have for those people who are uh, who's buying? Who who doesn't hear? It's it's very important for them to have a screen readers to pull out this inf important information by tapping on the phone or tapping on the um or any any other device. So navigation, I think navigation is very important for websites because when you go to a website, you don't want to go you don't you don't want to have a user to think. You want to have them to um, you want to have them to go uh, a navigation a menu or uh, some pages you want to go tell them to go to. So, for instance, I have a bad example. This is a site from like I don't know nineteen hundreds or back in two thousands. So it's 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 a site basically an index of an index of an index. You don't know where to go. You don't know. You don't know. Basically, you don't know what is they try to show us in the website. In our example, we have a, like a drop down. We have a menu, main menu, secondary menu. So I think it's a very great good example of nowadays we should use uh, good navigation. It's just like if you go to Walmart, for instance, you want to find like a phone charger. Do you really go to an uh, electronic de department or do you want to go to like? Um, AutoZone apartment because AutoZone also they carry a phone charger as well. So yeah. So when deploying deploying codes into a sub theme, you want to make sure all your codes, all your JavaScript, all your CSS is neat and organized for the next person to carry on to understand your code. You don't want to give them uh, a some type of text they can they cannot read or understand. Um, it's it's a good it's a good um, for the people um, to to take over your code to understand why are you really know what to talk about. So testing um, after after all the site all after the site you finish building, I think you need to go for testing process. Testing process asks like you want to add like a, a block, add like a new page, see if anything breaks. Um, so all of our like features, news features, box, just make sure they don't break. Uh, mobile responsiveness. 
So I think now it's very important nowadays to have your website to fit on your phone. You don't want to have a phone or any kind of device to zoom in, drag, left and right. You just really want to focus on one page content to um, to, fo to focus what you really want to um, want to see. So mobile response is very, very important. And that's that's all I have to say. Thank you. Does anyone have questions for us? Yes. Yes. Well, I, I think Yale prefers that you, you know, at least use the Yale font for the, maybe for the, uh, the header and the title. Um, Victor, what do you think about that? <laughs> I think, you know, the, you know, if you look at the blue site, it's sort of like the, the standard for how uh, websites should look. Uh, you know, the fonts are, are already chosen. And also those fonts, we know they work well. Uh, and if you can really, it's a slippery slope when you start looking at odd fonts and it looks nice, you know, at, you know, this big on your screen when you're looking at it and then you get into the text and it's, you can't figure it, you know, you don't even know what it says anymore. So I, I think it's best just to stick with those fonts. Because as Victor said, the important part is the content and the overall design. Right. So. Harris? When you do sub-theming and you add in CSS to do the sub-theming, what's the difference between that and just using CSS Injector? Well, CSS Injector is a module, and if you put that, it will override the default of theming CSS. If you put the CSS into the sub-theme, it's better for you to, um, so you don't, if someone go to the just inject the add on that one, it will doesn't override the something it will has like a primary um, source of the CSS. So it's better to put it there. It doesn't break like what well, someone can just go there and just delete the rules and then in this day all your pages starting. Right, and I think too when you switch themes, if you're going from an older site to a newer site, it may break because the CSS regions may not be exactly the same name. Yes. Um, on the font issue, um, when you use a yellow font, is that going to be carried over for the people who actually do not have yellow font in order to read that correctly? Uh, uh, after this, it's mainly because uh, um, recently I had a certain kind of report that I created with the yellow font. I did not know that the yellow discarded yep. you know, those old. You know, Yep. So basically, all these new fonts have been converted into a completely different kind of font that does not fit you know, into the previous you know, format and the margin, everything. I've got to change it. So I'm just wondering if the website actually would be able to do that. Yeah, you can, you can upload any kind of font you like as long as you have a license. Um. No, I mean so that when you're on the other side of the people outside of you, Yes, yes. If you use the, the front that you want to use it, if it, it should show up to all the all the publics. As long as you um, that designated the right selector, then you'll be fine. Um, another issue is that I noticed that some sites, you know, when they, they announce certain kind of events, you know, when I'm trying to put that into my calendar, I could not copy that. Um, I don't know if how common it is 
the other issue is that sometimes when you have the font with white, you know, color, right. when you copy them, you know, they did not display, you know, on your calendar, and you have to change the color, you know, mm -hmm. to for that to be displayed. Yeah. But not always the time, but certainly there are lots of times, you know, either I cannot copy the contents, mm -hmm. or I, or the color, you know, is white. It, so sometimes that it happens because um, it might stuck at the cache. You might have to flash the cache. Another way is maybe um, the default of the CSS selector is not being called. Yeah, so you can change the theme, um, and I believe you can change the theme once you go into Drupal, right? Are you on Drupal 6 or 7? Okay. So, yeah, you can still change themes even if you go to 5. You can still change it. But that would be the order of, it would be better to already have pulled it into Yale 1 before coming to Drupal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you have concerns, you can contact the CMS team to help you sure. port that over. Did you have a question? Um, I have actually two questions. Sure. The first one is going with the Yale wide and going back to the topic of making it precise, easy to keep in on mobile devices such as Chrome. And you're mentioning that the uh, bar cross infinite. What happens when it's shrinks down to, to the side of your phone? So when it's shrinks down, the menu will become a hamburger menu, what they call it. So when you click on a three line hamburger, you click, click on it. It will have the all your navigation up here. Okay, so that's what the little three bars. Are. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the other one is, is going back to the sub themes. Um, I don't think I've ever heard of this before. Novice user, um, but I do. I, I am on Drupal seven. Does that just happen automatically for us? Just backups and things like that. Oh, normally uh -huh. uh, sub theme is is used for when you have a very high, highly custom sites. Okay. But if it's just like standard normally site, you you should just use a CSS injector. Um, but if you really like, like nursing, for instance, a big project, very high custom, we, we would put in the sub, we would request for something just in case someone break, breaks it. Okay, because what I've, I've had in the past is where um, I think we do a refresh or go back to our test area, test environment on Drupal uh, 7, and then that's how we do our changes, and then we just go to the Drupal 5 version. Of something very drastically, but this is where I'm concerned about, is just the backup going to be helpful for us again there? What, what can we take precautions to not mess up on this one? Do we have to go, even though it's a small site, probably just because it's really bad. Are you saying you have a development site that you're testing on before you push it live? Sometimes we do, but other times our, our the group, there's two of us, the two admins, um, and she made a change one time and it just wiped out a lot of things. Oh. And So for, so for that, you, you don't need to create something because that one you can, because we do have um, dev environment and test environments. So, and you also have production environment, which you are live right now. And when you want to make changes, it's good to want to have change production and dev at the same time. So let's say if the production breaks, the dev environment is still up and it's still fine. What we can do is we can restore something from dev environment and move it to production and then you'll be backed up. No, no problem. Okay, so it's better just to do a quick refresh. Yes, the, yes. From the phase production yes. to the dev, and then, and then if we make any changes, then we can restore back to the dev. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Yes? Uh, the color uh, Mark mentioned at the beginning, uh, after you set you know, the color, and uh, later on, if you want to change, do we have to change up every page, or if there is a center, or, or there is any place you can change everything going to? Well, uh, well, child can answer that, but I, I would advise against that, though, because, it, I mean, the, the reason you establish the color is because that color says something about the way you want the website to appear and, and feel. If you're going to change the color, that upsets the whole thing. You, you know, to me, that's starting back at the beginning again. So 
I, I, I probably I wouldn't advise against I wouldn't advise doing that. No, so unless there's some other reason. The theme really, really associated with the theme. Uh, that actually you know, is coded later on, you know, because when you copy them, it gets everything it has to be done the same. So if it's just yeah. like a like a box area, like a block, and you've put, you've picked say I don't know blue to highlight the top of that, then every block is going to have that look if you've cho if you've chosen it in the modification. Is that the question that you're asking? Yeah, I'm just wondering if that is really, um, actually associated with the theme. If it's associated with, it's associated with the theme, theme and you're modifying it, it. yep. Yeah. So every one of those elements that's the same will change. Yeah, so that's why. <laughs> Michael? I have a question. Um, <laughs> when you look at a design, how do you know the difference between um, something that looks like a big change, but it's actually just a small change, versus something that looks like a small change, but it's actually just a big change? <laughs> no, that's for you, You're Seth. saving the hard ones for Mark. Huh? <laughs> Well, that would be, I think, for child answers. Is that, is that my okay. question? Um, I kind of just look at the design and I just think about it. I don't know how that's being made, but just kind of just, I don't, I don't, it's having my mind. I just think about it. It's just, just there. I don't know how I should answer that. Well, I, I think probably from a developer's point of view, you would be able to answer that question better. I mean, from my point of view, I just I look at the elements that are on the main theme, and I and I think to myself, what what do they have to do to change that to get to what this person wants? And sometimes I'll ask the developer as I'm designing, you know, is this going to be a big deal? Is this going to cost a lot of money? And they'll say yes or no. And and then, you know, when I'm presenting the design to the client, I will defend it in those terms too. I'll say, you know. You wanted me to do this, but that was going to cost a lot. It's better if we do this. It still looks pretty much the way you wanted it to look. And that's, that's the way I approach that. I think, though, it would, you should probably start with what you want. <laughs> because you might, as Michael said, you might think it's a big deal, and it's not. And you know, it, could, it could go either way. So you shouldn't feel timid about, about asking the way you want things to look. Was it yeah. And it's just based on what you want to change and where, it's lo where the change is located. Because um, for you, for you both of, on both your sides, I think the change could be in a, a place that, um, like let's say, rooms or sections of the website that are very important to the design, and there are sections that are going to be easy to change. <laughs> so it depends on where the change is located. Like, I know. <laughs> so there you go. Yes. So you can make the modification, some of the modifications in the theming. You can go in and you can change colors and you can change some fonts and you can change some sizes of things. But if you want something custom like nursing or you want something to look a little bit different, then you would come to us and we would help you through that process. So I think if you're doing something third party that we're not doing, then we would we would try and hook you up with a, a, a vendor for that or tell you someone within ITS that could help you with that particular thing. Like if you needed something with Qualtrics, for instance, for surveys, we would hook you up with Jeff Campbell's team and, and James's team. Um, 
But we have worked with people who have their own designers, um, and we do work with them as well. So if, if it's someone that you like and you, you trust and you want to work with, well, we will work with them too. The only difference is that they, um, designing for Yale sites is very specific. And so, you know, you saw all of the grids and the regions and all of that stuff. And so Mark has that knowledge. Um, but we can also always help somebody get up to speed on that knowledge. Yes. Um, by the way, when you load the image, in that way, that image will be automatically um, treated to a size that is suitable for the website. Or do you have every time you know, to reduce the size of the image before you load it? Uh, that, that one is use, um, we put it as, um, instead of using pixel, we use um, percentage. So when you resize your browser, the image go by percentage, it's, it's going to reduce the size of it. Does that answer your question? So do you mean that you can design something, whenever you load that image in, and it's automatically uh, resized to the correct size, right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. all, uh, yeah, it's all, uh, is it okay, all so you don't have to worry about the no. images you no. loaded in. No. It's always better, it's not always better to work from larger to smaller, so loading in a larger image ne isn't necessarily going to look better smaller. If, it, if the resolution of it is better, it's going to look better. So if it's a higher resolution, it's going to look better when it's smaller. And you also, you don't want to have an image that has text. So, so if you have an image over the text, which is fake text, you want to use a real image with a real um, font, so when you resize it, the font will still have the same size, and but because when you reside at a fake image, the image—I mean, the text is so small that you can't even read it. Mm -hmm. And also, it's not good for accessibility. So right. for people who are blind or low sighted and, and need a screen reader, it's not going to read the—it's not going to read the text that's baked into the image. You want it to be HTML. So upstairs, we have um, the Yale Sites table, which is Chow's team, who, if anyone is interested to talk to them about your site. And then also the user experience and digital strategy team. Um, Caitlin Thompson, our service manager, is sitting upstairs if you guys have questions. We also do consultative packages, which is 15 hours of free work um, to help you with a problem that you might be having with your site. And we also do user testing. And there's uh, third Thursdays every month, which is free user testing. And that's done with Sylvia Perez, who's up top. So if you guys have any questions, please let us know. And thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your day.